Hey guys, okay, so I'm going to try and update you as best I can right now because um, a lot's happened since my last vlog. But uh, to, as of tomorrow, which is going to be May 28th, Saturday, I will be 19 weeks pregnant, so I'm almost halfway. Um, I'm not as stressed out as I was before because I was really kind of thinking that I might miscarry. You know, like the more kids you have, you feel like you're gonna like press your luck with each child and I have two healthy kids and so it's for some reason I was just super stressed out and the more you know the more like you can kind of think too hard on the things that might happen um, but I'm a lot more positive these days um, my morning sickness has eased up um, I didn't take my Zofran for like um, my nausea medication for like a couple weeks maybe or it felt like a couple weeks maybe it was only one I took one this morning just because I was like oh I'm starting to feel it and I was eat after I ate I still kind of felt a little nauseous and then I was gonna go work out so I was like I really don't want to be nauseous during my workout so yeah um took one pill this morning but hopefully I'll be fine tomorrow and so on and so forth but yeah I've been feeling really good as far as my nausea goes I've been working out more consistently um, been eating a little bit well a lot better compared to like the first trimester um, and then But I still have a pretty strong sweet tooth Like I just like to eat even when I'm not hungry. I just come like oh, well, let's eat, you know <laughs> something crunchy, especially um, Easing up on the fast food not <laughs> doing that um, much anymore, but I did it for a little while and um, So as far as medically my test came back and um, I feel comfortable sharing it now because things are okay, but I had an A1C blood panel done, which is basically, they wanna see if you have gestational diabetes and you need to be below 5.7, whatever that means. I still don't really know for sure. Um, and I was 5.7, so for somebody who's not pregnant, that's borderline diabetic. And since this, um, blood panel is like a three month type thing it's from the last three months not just the day of like a blood glucose so um, the worry was that I am borderline diabetic especially like this early on in the pregnancy you're not considered gestational diabetes you're considered like borderline diabetic or diabetic and I can kind of see how why the it was like that because my diet was shit and I was just eating a ton of sugar all the time and I was feeling like shit so that probably didn't help like it added to the morning sickness I'm sure because when I eat good I feel a lot better um, even if it's fruit like I am all about natural sugars like all about it um, but you know you have to think moderation too I was drinking like orange juice like crazy which I'd never done before um, throughout all of my prep even my bulking I wasn't like a big juicer um, I would just eat you know like maybe in my shakes and stuff but protein shakes and whatever but I didn't even really do that a whole lot um, this past prep but I kind of was just a bad girl after this last prep and um, rebounded like I've mentioned before but um so I had my one hour glucose after I got the results back from that and they were really good let's see if I can remember the numbers they want it to be between 65 and 140 and mine was 85 so like past my blood glucose with fly flying colors, which makes me believe I'm not a diabetic. I haven't had my doctor's appointment yet. Um, it's like in a week and a half um, for the results of that, but I was so paranoid that I went and got the results myself from the lab because I'm like, I'm not waking, waiting four weeks to find out if I'm really a diabetic or not. Like this is serious business. And I started just really watching, it was like four days before I got the results. And I started really watching my diet really lowered my um you know um high glycemic carbs was focusing on lower glycemic and a low carb diet so um and like higher protein and you know a little whatever fat and i did some research on it and you know what happens if you're diabetic or just have gestational diabetes when you're pregnant so i'm feeling better i definitely am still eating sugars i'm back to like being okay with having a little bit of white bread but I am incorporating more like whole wheat grains into my family because sugar is just crazy I don't know if um, 
uh, I don't know. I don't know who's watching this. I don't know if you guys have seen um, Fed Up, but it's a really good documentary about the food industry and sugar, and it touches on diabetes. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, but yeah, it's just so awesome. It's on Netflix, if you have Netflix. I highly, highly recommend watching Fed Up. It just gives you a perspective on, you know, things and if things aren't high in fat then they're high in sugar and they'll say low fat but they've got a ton of sugar in them um, it's just best to stick to the natural type foods and unprocessed foods and not have a bunch of bread and I'm not saying like I'm the best person for the job I'll show you what I have for my lunch today which isn't bad I don't think yeah no it's just a salad and fruit I have some caramel rice cakes with are loaded with sugar I have teriyaki um, no not too just regular um, what is that? Beef jerky. Uh, yeah, so I'm just more and more aware of the sugar, especially since I had a diabetic scare. Um, and then, okay, so I, what I was going to say was if you do have gestational diabetes, like just be really careful. Like I feel you because I was so depressed. <laughs> um, you just have to really watch it. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? I'm just it's not a good thing but it kind of is because I needed this kick in the butt to like get me back on track and eating better and I know better and it was just kind of like a you know slap in the face like all right let's go let's do it we're supposed to be doing this whole time um what was I gonna say oh, okay so basically what happens is your body doesn't process the glucose. The hormones from the baby, if it's truly gestational diabetes, the hormones from the placenta um, block the insulin from working and doing what it's supposed to do. So your body is full of glucose um, and then you get more fat deposits so you will get fatter during your pregnancy, I would imagine. I don't like saying get fatter, like you would accumulate more adipose tissue. <laughs> and um, so your baby, baby's blood also gets more glucose and the baby gets more glucose than it needs, you know, more energy than it needs to, you know, grow and develop. And so it over produces insulin to, you know, process that glucose. Um, and then your baby obviously will get bigger as well. There's a risk for that if there's too much glucose for the baby too. Um, but also there's a worry that because of the increase in insulin to process the glucose that your baby will be born hypoglycemic because it's just processing, processing, processing that glucose. Um, cause the baby doesn't have diabetes. It's you. Um, so it knows how to process the insulin and glucose. And so it's born just like hypoglycemic, which means there's not enough glucose. And then there's, there can be some respiratory issues and just feeling weak and, you know, when you're hypoglycemic, you can, your, your vitals kind of get a little bit crazy. So it's really, really important for the baby, um, that you keep your diet in check. And so I plan on, um, retaking the A1C. It's a, since it's over a three month period of time, I have to wait three months from the time that I got my first A1C. And then if it's still kind of high, then I'll get even more serious about my diet. I'm, like I said, I'm not like super strict since I got my blood glucose back and I know I'm processing my glucose correctly. So I'm not worried about the baby. But um, if my A1C is still borderline or higher, hopefully it dropped, um, then I'm gonna have to really think about <laughs> what's going on. And I actually, I'll do more research on like, okay, well, why is my blood glucose test, my one hour glucose test fine? and then the A1C borderline. I'm just, and I know that's common because I've read it, but um, it would be nice to know like the actual, you know, reasons. But um, yeah, so I'll let you know what happens. Um, the other thing is we still don't have orders and so we're going to be possibly around for a while and so I might have my baby here, which I wasn't planning on having the baby in Monterey, um, but they have a really good hospital, CHOMP. Um, I'm all about natural birth, and so I'll talk more about that later if you're interested. I know my fitness channel, for those of you that are following me for fitness reasons, has turned into a pregnancy channel, but that's just where I'm at right now. Um, and that will change eventually, and I will be back to fitness <laughs> in five months, four and a half months. So bear with me. Um, and then hopefully we'll have a good transformation after that too. But anyways, so since I might be having the baby here, I'm going to be looking into more, like asking my 
um, doctor more serious questions, um, you know, because obstetricians are, you know, trained surgeons and they're there to deal with the complications of labor and delivery. And the fact is that most women, most healthy women with normal pregnancies will have um, a great birth without any interventions and are capable of having a natural birth without any complications. And the more you intervene on that type of labor, the more likely that of complications happening. Um, if you induce, that's more likely to lead to um, getting a, an epidural, which is more likely to lead to a C-section, and it's just kind of like this, you know, snowball effect type thing. And um, I know it's like a, traditionally how things have been running for a while now, and everybody's, you know, backing into the hospital waiting for the epidural, but um, like I just feel strongly that natural birth is the best way to go and I don't want to like get into that too much um, but I feel like really that people need to just do their own research and um, decide what they need to do to have you know the birth that they want but I'm just I think that a natural birth can be for everybody as long as there isn't complications and everybody talks about how empowering it is to be able to go through that and get through it and um, being, but not, it's not about pride for me and being empowered because I am naturally empowered. I'm, I feel like I'm a strong person. Um, but I feel like it's what's best. It's what's natural. There's a reason why the baby goes through the birth canal. There's a reason why we need to feel what's going on so that we are capable of pushing so that we don't, you know, um, you know, end up in a C-section, um, uh, there's just, you know, your vitals drop with the, your blood pressure can drop with getting an epidural. That's why they load you up with, you know, fluids and IVs through the IV and, you know, the baby's vitals can, you know, whatever you're not feeling, the baby stills feeling. And so how is that fair? I, I mean, <laughs> I don't want to get all like political on this topic, but, um, I'm just all about the natural birth. And so I really want to make sure that my doctor, cause I'm not seeing a midwife. I saw a midwife last time, not that that helped very much. Um, I saw somebody in Texas was a midwife, but she was like all about like just rushing through the process. And the fact of the matter is whether you have a midwife or a regular doctor, even if they're great and all about natural birth, um, they have to follow the protocols of the hospital, which are to, if you're not progressing fast enough, they're going to augment your labor one way or another and get you to have that baby as soon as possible, which ultimately intensifies the process and can increase your risks of getting a C-section, which to me is horrifying. Um, an epidural is scary and, you know, you're sticking a needle into your central nervous system, which could ultimately like paralyze you and cause you major back pain for, you know, the rest of your life. And then the C-section is major abdominal surgery that you have to recover from. And it's just, I don't know why people are so like ready to just do that. But, um, so yeah, the fact of the matter is they're just going to do that. So my plan is to labor at home as long as possible, but I want, if I'm going to have the baby at the hospital, then I want the doctor to, you know, be on board with how I want. And I don't want it to be like a confrontational setting when I'm going through labor. It should be very peaceful and relaxing and calm and supportive and, um, you know, just going through the motions of what you need to do and stay in the zone that you need to be in, not bright lights and metal and you know, the sterile, you know, hospital instead of the comfort of your own home. So I really like to have a home birth, but I just, it's fighting the system, especially in the military might be a little bit more difficult fighting a midwife that's TRICARE, cert, you know, certified. And then, and then I'm also thinking about getting a doula. So there's lots of things to think about that I'll keep you guys in touch with, um, and let you know about all that and then just a little FYI I was a doula for a little while and I didn't complete my certification through Dona um, but yeah I loved it and like my dream job is to be a midwife so um, eventually one day when I grow up I'll do that but um, yeah so definitely natural childbirth is one of my passions and um, so I'll let you know how my next appointment goes and what questions I ask and how the doctor responds and um, just if I plan on changing and getting a midwife and I might just interview a midwife anyways um, and, and probably
possibly have a doula as well. My husband uh, was great my last uh, delivery with my son who I had naturally um, and I also had a doula. It's just nice to have like an extra backup person that isn't emotionally involved because it can be really hard to see somebody you love, you know, going through something that is intense, um, but it's also beautiful and amazing to go through. So um, I think that about catches you up on everything. Now I'm on my way to work. It's Friday and I will catch you next time.